All right, here's a video I never thought I'd picture myself doing. WrestleMania 39, night one happened last night as of the time of this recording. And I figured I'd do an overview. You know, I didn't take notes. I didn't treat this WrestleMania like I've treated the first five WrestleManias. You know, actively watching every match, taking notes, being... Uh, ever observant of what's going on in the ring. I was invited to a hangout, and that's really what I uh, I treat WrestleMania these days and Royal Rumble as uh, ex hangout excuses is what I call them. You know, because I'm always down to hang out with the boys, and even, you know, no matter how I feel about the WWE, I never let that get in the way of hanging out with the boys, my, my real-life friends. And so I went and watched WrestleMania 39, and um, I wasn't very overly critical. Didn't take a lot of notes. <clears throat> but just bear with me. I'll try to get through it. I'll try to make it short. I, I really would like to keep this video under 15 minutes. And I think I can because I don't have notes. I'm just going off the dome. So I came into my buddy's house. And I missed Austin Theory and John Cena. And let me go ahead and tell you. <clears throat> don't know who Austin Theory is. Never liked John Cena. And admittedly, I will disclose this information. I'm a bit of a John Cena hater. Just never like to get... Which is odd because I love John Cena's Peacemaker. I love him as an actor. I saw him in... Uh, was it Trainwreck? With uh, Amy Schumer. And I thought he was hilarious. I think he's hilarious in Peacemaker. I think he's wonderful to, for the role. I loved him in Suicide Squad. And I want to see more of John Cena in the DC Universe. So I don't hate John Cena the person. I just hate John Cena the wrestler. I've just never been behind the guy for whatever reason. I just plain and simple, I'm a hater. So didn't care about seeing Austin Terry versus John Cena. Came into the Braun Strowman and let me see. I can't see this name real well. I got the I got the card pulled up. Ryko Cimet. I, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Rico Cement. I, I have no idea. Then they're versing the Street Profits. Then they're versing Alpha Academy. Then they're versing the Viking Raiders. I like these gimmick matches where you're getting a lot of tag teams. Oh, excuse me. It's Ricochet. Let me let me go back to that. It's Ricochet. Braun Strowman and Ricochet. This uh, picture I'm using to talk about the card is just so pixelated and stretched out that I couldn't see Ricochet. But yeah, it's Ricochet with Braun Strowman. And then last in the match is the Viking Raiders. I don't know if I mentioned them. But anyways, I love these gimmick matches where you have teams of tag teams like going against each other. I, I watched my very first Survivor Series uh, a couple nights ago. It was the 1990, 1988 Survivor Series, the second ever Survivor Series. And I really enjoyed the uh, idea of, of teams of wrestlers going against each other. So really cool to see the the format here. But, uh, you know, admittedly, there I didn't see a lot of the match. It was just kind of on while we were all hanging out and, and enjoying each other's company. Uh... And I got to say, I wasn't really impressed with anybody but the Viking Raiders. Now, I don't know what team Otis is a part of. You know, I don't, I don't know a whole lot of wrestling anymore, especially the WWE roster. I don't know if he's Street Profits or Alpha Academy. I have no idea. But this, this Otis guy that my friend really likes, he got some chuckles out of me. I wouldn't call him a good wrestler, but he was entertaining to watch, and that's really what it's about is the entertainment factor. It's world wrestling entertainment, right? So, so I'm, I'm not going to be overly critical of Otis and his wrestling. So, he, so I would just say he was enjoyable to watch. But these Viking Raiders, I was impressed with them. They didn't have the greatest look in the world. Uh, and I admit, I kind of made some jokes about their appearance at first when I was taking in the match, when I first sat down and got comfortable. But uh, I, as I watched the match progress, the Viking Raiders were just really creative. And I really, really liked seeing... That stuff from them, their moves and stuff. Uh, next up, I believe we had Seth Rollins versus Logan Paul. And I used to love Seth Rollins. Used to love Seth Rollins. He had that really super metal intro. Um, 
he would come out in the shield like armor and, and i thought it was so cool and, and i don't know i don't know what's going on with seth Rollins these days I, I i can't get behind it he comes out to this very weird theme song he's got highlights and very long hair and he he wears bright colors now and maybe he's hit a point in his career where he feels like he has nothing to prove it feels like he's a wannabe jericho like when he was coming down the ramp i thought you know he's in this big poofy pink jacket looking like a a crazy man you know somebody clearly trying to get a reaction from fans looking like he looks on the ramp and and then the whole time i could just think you know this feels like wannabe chris jericho like chris jericho does this kind of stuff dresses funny and goofy to get reactions from the crowd and here it is with seth Rollins. so i, I just wasn't behind the look anymore the, the whole like vibe seth Rollins has got nowadays i don't know I, it wasn't for me and then logan paul i don't like the pauls at all i think they're bros i think they're excuse my french i think they're fuck boys i'm, I'm gonna be real <clears throat> I, I just don't care about the paul brothers I wish Mayweather had seriously taken his, Logan's brother to town. Or it might have been Logan that fought Mayweather. I'm not sure. I wish Mayweather hadn't have been so defensive. I'd like to see him pound on the, the Paul brother that fought him a little more. And it was just in total eye roll. He came out <clears throat> with this guy in a prime energy drink suit and total eye roll. And I'll be fair. You know, I don't want to be overly critical of the match because... It actually was a solid match. Like, Logan Paul can wrestle a little bit. And, and Seth Rollins, it, you know, we all know what Seth Rollins can do. <clears throat> was I excited about the match? No, not at all. Uh, I was ready for the match to be over. I feel like it jumped the shark a little bit. And, I, you know, I was ready to see it done. But uh, kudos to Logan Paul and Seth Rollins for coming out and putting on a match that I thought should have been a squash match. Uh, I thought Seth Rollins should have just squashed Logan Paul and moved on. And then next up, <clears throat> I believe we had Becky Lynch, Lita, and Trish Stratus versus Bailey, Io Sky, and Dakota Kai. This is the match I was the most interested in for all of WrestleMania, both nights when I saw the card. Uh, I remember Trish Stratus from the Attitude Era. Lita came in not far behind. Trish Stratus with the Hardy Brothers. She, she may have come in by herself and then later tag teamed with the Hardy Boys. I, I don't really know her career very well. But I, I have memories of Lita, and that was cool. And then I, I like Becky Lynch. So, you know, up to this point in the overview, I've been pretty critical of, of the wrestlers, blowing them off, you know, not really fans. But i got to say, Becky Lynch is one of the current members of the WWE, full-time members that I enjoy watching. She, she's quite entertaining, and she's one of the greatest female wrestlers I've ever seen, in my opinion. Uh, not really a fan of Bayley, but I remember Bayley from like her face free hugs day back in NXT. There was a spurt in time when I got into the NXT. It was when Zayn and Bayley and... Kevin Owens were all coming up from NXT. I don't remember the time frame, but uh, that's when that's when I got actively back into wrestling for just a little bit. And I don't remember being a fan of Bailey back then, but I feel like the heel gimmick works for Bailey these days. She seems, seems to have a lot of uh, fans now of her, and uh, I don't know anything about Io Sky or Dakota Kai. Um, can't say I watched every second of this match was ever present of this match, but I will say there was one really cool spot. Uh, well, we got a tr Stratus faction. Uh, that was cool. We got to see Trish show off her finisher, and I got to say, Trish has still got it. She, I don't know if she could be a full-time wrestler. She's in her 50s now, I think. Late 40s, anyways, you know, and, and working a full-time schedule would really take a toll on her body, I would assume. But, uh, you know, for one show coming out for WrestleMania, and she, she really has it still. She, she could wrestle a lot more if she wanted to. I fully believe that. And, and seeing her satisfaction, it, was, it wasn't sloppy. It was great. Executed greatly. And uh, I was very impressed with Trish. Lita was pretty solid. You know, I, I felt like she still had her stuff. It wasn't an eye roll when she, you know, I saw she had the belt, and I was like, maybe she's a little past her prime. 
kind of wondering why she's got a belt around her waist. But uh, when I saw her in the ring, I was like, okay, Lita still got it. I still believe that she deserves to be champion. So I liked, I really liked seeing Lita with the belt. I liked seeing Lita on the roster again. Nice addition. And then Becky Lynch was really solid, really great wrestler. She sells moves really well. And there was a really cool spot. I don't know which member of Bailey, Io Sky, and Dakota Kai were on the turnbuckle, but two of the girls were laid out on the concrete or the mat. And another girl was on the turnbuckle. And they had two, um, I believe it was Trish and Becky Lynch were, or excuse me, yeah, Trish and Becky Lynch were underneath the girl on the floor. And then Lita, I believe, came up and did a Hurricane Rana into the arms of Trish Stratus and Becky Lynch. And she, like, Hurricane Rana'd the girl off the turnbuckle onto the girls. And I thought it was a really cool spot, something I've never seen before. That was really creative. And, uh, you know, just a really cool spot and a really good match. You know, women's wrestling has come a long way, and that match showed it uh, very much. Next up in in WrestleMania 39, we got Rey Mysterio and Dominic Mysterio. I saw the the background, the uh, what, what do you call it, the backstory to this match. They they showed the backstory, the lead up to this match because you know casual fans are going to tune into WrestleMania. Why not give them a backstory, right? Well, I was not invested. The backstory didn't get me energized. I just can't believe. I can't suspend my belief enough to, to actually believe Dominique hates his dad. Like, I'm pretty sure Dominique and Ray went and had a beer after the match and was like, good job, son. Like, that kind of thing. I, you just, I just cannot get behind this storyline at all. And then Dominique is kind of trash as a wrestler. I, I saw, like, one or two, like, cool slams. But overall, it was Rey Mysterio and his very entertaining lucha style. That made the match fun at all to watch. Uh, I was ready for the match to end. I wasn't really into it. And that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> I don't want to be too overly critical. I feel like I'm being critical enough of current wrestling. So we'll just keep it moving. And then the match... Uh, the second match I was most interested in in all of WrestleMania was the women's ti title match. Or excuse me, the WWE SmackDown Women's Championship match. Charlotte Flair and Rhea Ripley, very, very, very good match. Is it a, is it a five star legendary like top ten all time match? Not at all. There was little to no technical wrestling in this match, and I'll and I'll touch on that later when I get into my thoughts of night one as a whole. But uh, I thought the wrestling they were doing was very fun and entertaining. There was very creative slams. I like towards the end seeing Rhea Ripley and Flair uh, trading finishers. And it wasn't just like back to back. It, it, it felt organic. Like I really felt like each girl was taking punishment from each finisher being delivered to them. I never felt like they weren't selling each finisher very well. They, they kept me guessing. Um, Rhea Ripley was getting dominated early, and I tend to have the mindset of when your face is getting dominated early, I almost assume there's going to be a comeback victory for the face. Uh, if the face starts out strong in a match, I tend to think the face is going to lose. That's just my experience with wrestling. The heel is always going to find a way out of losing the match when they're getting dominated. That just seems to be the uh, nature of the beast of wrestling. But they kept me guessing. I, I, I thought Rhea Ripley was going to have a comeback victory because Charlotte Flair came on strong. And then they started trading finishers. They started coming up with more creative moves to do to each other, more creative slams, and, and I was guessing it. I really liked it. Match of the night for sure. Awesome match uh, for today's style of wrestling and uh, very impressive to see the women steal the show in my opinion and then we get to the undisputed wwe tag team championship match the usos versus Sami Zayn and kevin owens and, and i'll go ahead and get the elephant out of the room i'm a massive kevin owens hater i can't stand kevin owens uh, he blocked me on twitter 
back when I had a Twitter account because I would at him and heckle the mess out of it. I just don't like Kevin Owens. He's too dramatic. Uh, he he just gets so into his role that it's corny. It comes off as very corny. And there were plenty of moments in the match where, you know, Sami Zayn's hurt and Kevin Owens is, like, hurt. And he's, like, reaching out, giving all of his energy just to, like, reach out his hand for the tag and, like, take up for his best friend, Sami Zayn. And it was just so dramatic. And the Usos, uh, you know, the wrestling was good. Let me Let me say that. The moves and the execution and the selling was good. What was awful about this match was the flow of the match. It was so, so slow for a WrestleMania main event. My gosh. You know, in today's wrestling where where, where wrestlers are trying to be more entertaining with their wrestling, that's really, it's just... 100% about the entertainment factor in wrestling these days. Uh, maybe 1% about technical wrestling anymore in the WWE. and um, Which is fine, but I'm saying that to say... In this day and age of caring all about entertainment, you lose the crowd when you have such a slow match. And it was just like... Zayn and Owens tr just taking a beating, and then they would somehow mount an offense, and and it never seemed like we got all four wrestlers in the ring at the same time very much, and very one on one with the other partner from either team being like laid out for minutes at a time, and then the part the other partner would like magically recover and come to their partner's aid. Uh, and I felt like the match totally jumped the shark. They should have ended it much earlier, which is not good. You know, I said this when I reviewed WrestleMania 1. If your main event is not good, then your pay-per-view is a bust. It doesn't matter about the rest of the matches, which they had, fan they had two very fantastic matches, in my opinion, and other solid matches. Uh, and the main event... Not the worst match, but not, I mean, I'm not even sure it was a good match. Like, it's just so slow. And uh, I also was discouraged to see that the super kick doesn't matter anymore. You know, one thing that used to, the finisher used to matter in wrestling. You used to have to earn your finish. You used to have to. Convince the crowd that you've done everything you can to put the wrestler away. And then you did your finisher. And then you won the match, right? And not every time, you know, not every time a finisher is executed does, you know, that put the wrestler away. You want some variety, right? But uh, seeing the Usos do like 45 super kicks in this match. They're, they did multiple like double super kicks to Sami Zayn. And to see Sami Zayn kick out of all of that, like, it was just discouraging to see that finishers don't matter anymore. And, you know, hearkening back to Rhea Ripley and Charlotte Flair, as much as I loved seeing those two ladies trade finishers, it just again goes to show that the finisher doesn't really matter anymore in wrestling. Um, we've, we've covered Kevin Owens' Uh, Sami Zayn, I used to be a fan of Sami Zayn in NXT. I liked when he came out to ska music and would dance and had the, the newspaper boy hat. And uh, I recently checked back in with Sami Zayn because I was invited to a Royal Rumble hangout. First time I've seen Sami, Sami Zayn wrestle in years. And uh, Sami Zayn is just too ADHD, too goofy for me. I don't care about Sami Zayn, can't get behind him. Not into it at all all um and i thought the way Sami Zayn was selling the finishers was really dramatic over the top and uh just couldn't get behind it. i don't know the whole, the whole match was awkward it was off and uh you know my buddy my buddy's big into this bloodline storyline he he was excited about this match i think it was a match he was looking forward to the most 
at WrestleMania. And uh, good for him. Good for anybody that likes the Usos, that likes Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. But uh, I think this match just goes to show that wrestling's kind of left me behind. And at least the WWE's left me behind. And uh, wasn't for me. Wasn't for me at all. So that's WrestleMania 39. I don't expect to see Night 2. Because I, I, the only guy I care about at all in Night 2 is Drew McIntyre. I think he's got a cool gimmick, you know, with me being a fan of heavy metal music. I think it's cool that he's got, like, a power metal, like, He-Man vibe to him. I feel like he should be coming out to Iced Earth and, like, swinging a flaming sword. Uh, I like that about Drew McIntyre, but, you know... He's the only guy I care about. You know, I like Bray Wyatt, but he's not even at WrestleMania this year. So, there goes that. And then and then I have no interest in Cody Rhodes versus uh, Roman Reigns. I used to be a big Roman Reigns fan when he was a face. But now that he's a heel, I don't know. I feel like it, it just gets old the, this day and age when guys you know because we're well into the era of knowing it's wrestling entertainment it's theater and so when a guy goes on a 1000 day run with a title it gets old and repetitive fast which is why one thing i didn't like about lesnar it was just lesnar was all in your face all the time suplex city is like it's just so boring and repetitive and uh it's just boring and repetitive to see Roman Reigns defend the title in this day and age. Uh, just not into long-standing title runs anymore. Wrestling's just too overexposed. It's too easy to see Roman Reigns defend his title every Monday night, every Thursday night on SmackDown, and then once a month on his pay-per-view. It's just too much for me to see him win over and 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 over, and over again for almost a 1,000 days. So... I hope Cody wins, but at the same time, I'm pretty bitter. Full disclosure, I am very bitter and salty. Cody Rhodes left the AEW. You know, WWE crapped on him his first time around, and he had to leave. He had to go to the NWA. He had to go to Japan. He had to make a name for himself. He had to get better at wrestling. Came to AEW uh, and finally got over with the American wrestling audience, and I feel like AEW made him here in America, and he just turned his back. I don't care what his reason for leaving AEW was. And I will kind of agree, maybe the fans ran Cody off. But whatever the reason may be, I just feel betrayed by Cody. I'm super salty about it. And uh, I don't I do not want to watch Cody. You know, I, I don't I don't want to be petty and say I'm boycotting Cody, but I'm really not trying to make any effort to see Cody Rhodes wrestle in the WWE. Um, but yeah, that <laughs> That's my thoughts, guys. You know, and, and I'll I'll turn off the negativity. I really don't want to be that neg negative about WrestleMania. That's one reason I don't talk about current wrestling because I'm just not a big fan of it. So why spend your energy talking about things you don't like, right? So let's spend our energy talking about things we do like. Holy crap, women's wrestling has come a long way. That's one thing that stands out about WrestleMania 39. Super impressed with every single lady that wrestled last night. Uh, man, they they must be getting taught by men these days and, and, and not necessarily the women. Uh, just overly impressed with with uh, each lady. I, th I thought each lady brought something to the table uh, last night. Uh, I'm super impressed with the refereeing these days. You know, going back and watching these old WrestleManias, watching the, the 1988 season of WWF, uh, the, the refereeing was a lot sloppier, and, and the refereeing these days feels a lot more professional, a lot, a lot, uh, just a lot more, uh, they, they execute their job better, I, I guess is the way to say it. There are just so many times in, in 80s wrestling where I'll see a full three count from the ref, and, and it'll have to be up to the ref to call the match or not. Because uh, sometimes you can't tell in real time if, if a wrestler kicks out or not. And there wasn't one time last night where I saw a ref hit a three count and that wasn't the true, legit, clean, you know, win of the match. Every time there was a, a real late kick out, 
the ref did a good job of tucking their arm and not hitting the mat for a third time and confusing the crowd and confusing the TV audience. So i got to give a lot of props to the officials in this current era of wrestling. Uh, and i got to give a props give props to uh, every wrestler on the card sells pretty decent. Uh, I didn't see much half-ass wrestling at all. I didn't see a lot of half-ass like selling moves either. Like every wrestler put on their their A game and and you know the wrestling execution wasn't good from a couple wrestlers, you know, they didn't they didn't have a um a wrestling move repertoire that that wowed me or impressed me not every wrestler some a lot of them did though but every wrestler seemed to be really good at selling the moves they were receiving so that seems to be something that's uh, that's come a long way since the 80s comparing it to all these old 80s shows uh, i've been watching recently uh, and that'll do it. You know, I don't want to call WrestleMania 39 a bust. It was a huge sold-out crowd. Everybody was entertaining. The crowd got what they wanted. And, and I've accepted the fact that the WWE in 2023, the, hell, the WWE for the last 15 years, just it really isn't for me. The only thing I've cared about, really cared about, and really wanted to tune in to watch as much as I like Bray Wyatt, the only wrestler that really made me want to tune in and watch them on TV was CM Punk. And uh, I just don't feel that heat from anybody anymore these days. But that's cool. That's cool. Wrestling's not for me. It might be for you. It's definitely for the fans that watch WrestleMania 39. And uh, I feel like it's another fun WrestleMania night one in the books. And hopefully the fans, people that actually care about the WWE nowadays get what they want, and feel satisfied from night two tonight. That'll do me, guys. Uh, just take me with a grain of salt. This is just my opinion. This isn't the gospel. And I'm not here to tell you you're wrong for liking current WWE wrestling. Um, I would enjoy some discourse. If you disagree with me, if you'd like to hash out some of these matches, feel free to do so in the comments and uh, next time you see me, we will be talking about WrestleMania 6. So until next time, guys.